Hello, welcome to the July edition of Stop Diabetes Insight, brought to you by the American Diabetes Association of Indiana. We're so glad to have you join us today. We have some exciting things in our, uh, in our episode today. As you can see, I'm surrounded by all this lovely fresh produce. So that's a hint of what's to come in the latter segments of our show today. We need to thank Marsh for their generous donation of all this produce. We just completed our first major fundraising event of the year, our Tour de Cure that we held at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Unfortunately, it was a rainy day, so we had to cancel the road routes of our tour, but that did not detour another six or 700 riders from coming out and riding around the track that day. We had people riding 100 miles, we had people riding two miles, and we had food and festivities, and it was a great event. So next year, you need to put that on your calendar. If you didn't join us this year, you need to make sure you do next year. And then our next big event is our Step Out Walk to Stop Diabetes on Saturday, August the 27th. We do this at White River State Park um, at Celebration Plaza, which is right outside the NCAA building. Um, you can find out more information by going to diabetes.org slash IndyWalk. That's I-N-D-Y-W-A-L-K. Um, the day promises to be filled with fun and activities for all ages. The route is easy for all abilities to walk. Um, you're welcome to bring your dog. We always have a lot of dogs at the walk. And again, fun, fun food and activities, and it's just a great day. Um, a reminder that our support group meets the third Tuesday of every month at our office. Um, our office is at 8604 Allisonville Road. Again, the address is 8604 Allisonville Road in Indianapolis. We're right at the right at the stoplight there at 86th and Allisonville, just off 465. And our building is next to the old Gert Furniture Building, so you can use that as your landmark. Um, second Tuesday, or excuse me, the third Tuesday of the month from 6 to 7 p.m. And we have expert guests that come along and present at our support groups. And we also have just peer-to-peer -peer sharing so that people can, you can learn from each other on, on the best tricks and, and practices for managing your diabetes. It's a great way to connect with others. There is no cost to join and you do not have to make reservations. You can just show up and we encourage people to bring a friend or another family member with them to the support group. We welcome visitors to our office. Um, I already gave you the address, 8604 Allisonville Road in Indianapolis. Um, our office hours are 8.30 to 5 and uh, Monday through Thursday. For the summer hours, we are closed at 12.30 on Fridays, so 8.30 to 12.30 on Fridays. But we have a host of materials in our office that we're happy to share with you. So if you're in the area, stop on by. We'd be pleased to meet you. Um, you know, in our next segment, it's going to be pretty exciting. This is something we've not done before, but we have fabulous interns at the American Diabetes Association. And so it's going to be my pleasure to be able to introduce them to you um, in our next segment. They'll tell a little bit about themselves, what brought them to the ADA, and then they're going to tell you about our diabetes camp. We just hosted 176 children at diabetes camp the first week of June, and it was a fabulous experience for these kids. All of the interns were there, they worked hard, they were an intricate part of this program, and so they're going to share their experience with you. So stay tuned, and up next, it's Meet the Interns of the American Diabetes Association. We'll see you in a minute.
welcome back. Um, we are the interns for the American Diabetes Association, and we're, we're here to tell you about our experience at Camp John Warble this summer. I'm Madison Mertz, and I'm a senior studying at Purdue University, and I'm studying human services. I'm Kennedy Wall, and I'm a junior at Indiana University studying sport marketing management. And I'm Katherine Washam, and I'm also a senior at Purdue University studying public health. So Camp John Warble is a really cool experience because kids with diabetes of all ages from 7 to 17 get to come and just experience week, a week at camp just like any other regular kid and not have to worry about their diabetes and that's probably my favorite part of camp is just getting to see the kids act like kids and not have to constantly be worried about their diabetes because they have med staff there to help them monitor it and they get to partake in so many cool different activities and things like that. My favorite part about camp would have to be the senior camper program. So you can start out and be a camper from 7 years old until you are 16 years old and then after that you can be a senior camper. Um, the senior campers come back and they are part of the dietary staff and they are paired with a cabin and they stay with the cabin all day long, teach them dietary information and how to count carbs and then you can be asked back to be a med staff and I think that's just an awesome program and a way to show kids that you don't have to stop coming to camp and you can just keep going. My favorite thing about camp was just being able to see a different camp. I'm a type 1 diabetic myself and I grew up in the Chicago area so I went to the Chicago area camps and it was just so cool to experience like what camp was like in a different state and to see how it was different and one of my absolute favorite things about it was that there were campers who not only like did the senior camper thing, but they were came back as med staff to help out too, and it just it stays with you. So as you can hear from all of our different experiences and viewpoints, that camp is a really cool place for kids to go and just be able to hang out and act like kids for a week and be able to be with other kids with type 1 di or type 2 diabetes and know that they're not alone and they're not the only person who's going through this. And it just shows them a really cool support system that they have with all of the kids at camp and including the med staff and dietary staff and things like that. So camp is a really cool place for kids to go. Um, when we come back, we will have Anna Busenberg, a clinical dietitian here, to tell us about summer produce. Anna Busenberg and thank you to Marsh for providing us with all of this wonderful summer produce for our segment. Like Madison said my name is Anna I have seen you guys before today um, we're going to talk about summer produce because it happens to be summer and there are tons of wonderful produce items down in the grocery store and at your farmers market so I wanted to highlight some of them um, that you may not frequently grab. A lot of us tend to get our bananas, apples, oranges. We don't always tend to try new produce and the summer is the perfect time to do that because it's all in season and it all happens to be cheaper. So uh, we're going to go through today and I'm going to share with you some of the nutritional benefits of all this different produce um, and hopefully then with our next segment we're going to share some recipes. So then you can take these produce items, pick them up at the store and then make them at your next cookout. So to get started, um, I wanted to focus on here at the end of the table, we have peaches. Um, this is one of my favorite summer food items because they are delicious and the season runs May all the way through September. So you can find fresh peaches throughout the entire summer. In fact, they are filled with lots of nutrients. They're orange, a deep, sometimes even almost red color, and that really helps to signify all of the antioxidants that can be found within peaches. They also have a lot of vitamin C, which can be good for your immune system, as well as vitamin A, which can help with your eyesight. 
So again, if you want to pick up this delicious fuzzy little fruit, it is filled with fiber, as with all of the produce we're going to talk about today, um, and that can be really helpful in terms of your GI health and even in terms of your blood sugar management. This next food item, we have the dried version of figs. This is pretty um, unique. Most of us don't tend to utilize figs in our daily diet, but I thought it would be great to highlight because it is in season here in the summer. So the figs come from the mulberry family. They actually, um, if you buy or find fresh figs, you can store them in a plastic bag in your refrigerator. Then you simply wash them, pat them dry, and remove the stem, and you can eat them. Um, so it's a really easy, quick snack. If you can't find the fresh version, Version. Um, dried figs are quite common and that's what we have an example of here today. Um, the only drawback to figs is that they can have a slight laxative effect on you if you consume too many. So do consume in moderation, um, but if you have any, you know, GI issues, sometimes it can be helpful. So that's your fun fact um, about figs. They're also rich in fiber um, and they contain lots of B vitamins as well. Um, and those vitamins help and work as a vasodilator and can help people that have um, high blood pressure. A lot of us are familiar with eggplant, especially when it comes to um, eggplant parmesan, a good vegetarian substitute um, for an Italian dish. But I wanted to also highlight and just show you what an eggplant looks like. They're very easy to grow. They are in the same family as uh, tomatoes, bell peppers, and potatoes. They grow on a vine, just like a tomato does. And then you can do so many different things with them. As you can see, there are dark, deep purple color, and that's signifying that they have a lot of what we call anthocyanins, which give them that color pigmentation, and that makes them rich in different antioxidants. Um, in fact, eggplant can be good for your brain, which is kind of a fun fact. Um, it contains different nutrients, which help to protect your brain cells are surrounded by fat or lipids, and eating eggplant helps to preserve that little lipid barrier and can help um, in terms of memory and cognition. They're also rich in fiber and have a very low glycemic index, which is perfect for a diabetic. Our next little fruit item is kind of small, but it is an apricot. Um, so fresh apricots are here in season now. Um, you can also find them dried, which is an excellent topper on, in terms of a salad, um, or if you can't find the fresh version. Again, they're yellow or a kind of a red color, which is again signifying those anthocyanins and beta carotene, which helps make them orange. Um, and that can be helpful in terms of eyesight. So again, you're noticing a common theme here. A lot of this produce has antioxidants, fiber, and it's really helpful in terms of just your overall health and management of just a healthy body. So lutein is what we find specifically in the apricot to help with protecting eyesight. Also, in case you were wondering about the dried fruit, if it's an apricot or a fig, um, the serving size for dried fruit is half of a cup. So pretty easy to remember and enjoy at home. Our next item, I love these, um, cherries. They're they come, they're in season now. It, their season runs normally, um, I believe, from the beginning of June um, through the summer. There are tons of different types of cherries. For example, there are seven, which is a lot. Normally when you go to the store, you end up finding one or two variations. Um, these happen to be Bing cherries. They are really deep red color. Um, they are, again, rich in lots of antioxidants, and they have actually a lower glycemic index than some of these other fruit items. So we've talked about apricots, we've talked about peaches. Um, the cherry actually has that lower glycemic index, which can be helpful if you're trying to keep track of that and managing your blood sugar. They also are helpful in terms of preventing Alzheimer's disease, cancer, and as well as any cardiovascular disease. All right, the ever famous tomato. There's lots of debate about whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable, but irregardless of all that, it really comes down to a wonderful summer produce item that a lot of people grow in their own backyard. You can easily find at your local farmer's market. Again, they're full of fiber. It's a common theme, but it can be very helpful, especially for diabetics when it comes to managing their blood sugar, because we wanna make sure that we're not um, causing their blood sugar to go high, but the fiber in all of this produce helps with that management. Also, um, one cup of cherry tomatoes, which are obviously smaller than these big like heirloom tomatoes or beefsteak tomatoes, um, one cup equals two grams of fiber. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you start to put it on a salad, it starts to add up and all of those ingredients contain small amounts of fiber and then you end up 
getting a whole fiber filled salad. The recommendations for women are 21 to 25 grams of fiber a day and for men 30 to 38 grams of fiber a day. So all this produce will help you meet those, those fiber goals. And the last produce item that we have here on the table um, are beets. Have you eaten beets? I have not. Never? Okay. Well, we're going to have a recipe later highlighting beets because it's a pro an, an uncommon um, produce item that a lot of people eat. But did you know you can eat the entire, the entire beet plant? So you can cut and use the greens, which are at the top of the plant, um, and cook them just like you would spinach or Swiss chard. And then you would use the fruit or that base of the beet where the actual red circular beet is um, and you can saute them you can roast them you can um, you can find them canned and you can even put them on salads so there's lots of things that you can do with beets um, and they again too are good for blood pressure and high blood pressure and can help bring those numbers down so here in our next segment we're going to talk about some recipes to utilize these fruit and fruit and vegetable items um, and hopefully you'll be willing we have one that includes beets. You don't have to try it, but you can definitely appreciate how lovely it looks. the clinical dietitian and she's here to tell us about some of the recipes that we can make with all of the wonderful produce we just heard about. Yeah, so um, I wanted to find easy recipes because I don't know about you, but if you go to cook something and you have a big drawn out recipe, it's very intimidating and you're just probably not ever gonna make it again if you make it yes. once. Um, so all of these are very simple, straightforward and shouldn't take you any longer than about 10 to 15 minutes to make. Um, well, not including cooking time. Um, and again, all the ingredients that are used in here um, are highlighting some of that produce we talked about in the last segment. So to get started, this happens to be a tomato um, salad with an edamame succotash, which sounds complicated, but believe me, it's very straightforward and simple. So obviously at the bed, on the bed of this salad, we have sliced tomatoes. Um, so simply taking larger heirloom or beefsteak tomatoes and slicing them up, and that's it. Um, and you arrange them however you want to on your plate. And then to make the edamame succotash, obviously we're including edamame, which is um, frozen soybeans. Have you ever had edamame? I do, I love it. Okay, um, so honestly for this, I just got frozen edamame from the store and it was already shelled and it was very easy to just throw into a saute pan. So the edamame goes into a saute pan with hot oil and red pepper flakes along with corn kernels. And again, I got frozen corn kernels because again, that's way easier than taking an ear of corn and removing yeah, the kernels from it. So this was way simpler. So two frozen produce items. And then um, with the oil I added in, I actually in this recipe used um, red onion. The recipe um, that came from Midwest Living called for green onions, but I didn't have any. So I just used red onions because I thought it would add a nice pop of purple, um, as well as red, sweet red pepper. So I cut half of one of those up, all of it went into the saucepan, all of it got, got sauteed and warmed up, and then simply I let it cool a little bit. I mixed together some, um, some lemon juice, uh, cilantro, no parsley, excuse me, um, parsley and mint, and mix that together and then place the succotash on top of the tomatoes. So it was that easy. Um, it's very colorful, it looks pretty appetizing, and it would make a very simple and easy salad to take with you to your next grilling out session with your family or picnic or something fun like that. And everyone will be really impressed at how pretty it looks. 
And there's lots of fiber, lots of different produce options in here. Um, and so that's gonna help even make a complete side or you could almost have this as a meal. Mm -hmm. So these are the beets. Um, you can't really, I know they just look like a purple blob kind of um, from a distance, but what I actually did is instead of using, you can use fresh beets, um, but I don't know if you've ever cooked a fresh beet, but you have to obviously cut off the greens, mm -hmm. you have to peel it like you would a potato, and then you cut it up and then you would cook with it. That's a lot of work and I didn't really wanna go through all that effort. Um, so I got canned beets and I rinsed them and I washed them and I sliced those up. Um, so that can work just as well as a fresh beet option. Obviously the fresh beet's gonna taste better than the canned option, but either way you can make this recipe all year long. It doesn't have to be just in the summer. Simply cut up the beets, had them ready to go, toss them with some olive oil, as well as some salt and pepper and fresh thyme. And then I put them on a pan and roasted them in the oven for about 20 minutes. And it was that simple. So these are just basically a roasted um, beet. Another variation I've done on this recipe is to take it and top it with feta cheese. So the beet tends to kind of be a little sweet and when you pair it with feta, it tends to be a little more sour and so it's kind of a nice pairing between the two. So it can also add a little bit of color and pizzazz to your, your roasted beet dish. And then lastly, here on the end, I actually have um, grilled peaches. So we talked about peaches in the first segment. And again, this is very straightforward and simple. Simply take your peach, you're gonna want it to be ripe. If it's not, it's gonna be really hard to cut and pull away from the pit that's in the middle. Um, you would cut it in half and then you coat it with some type of either oil or honey or something to help protect it when you put it on the grill. So you want these kind of um, charred lines to appear on the peach, but you don't want it to get stuck. And if it gets stuck, it's very hard to remove and you end up with just a peachy mess on your grill. And that's not really appetizing to anyone. Um, so I simply took the half of the peach and sprayed it with canola oil spray because that's really easy. And then I just laid it. Okay on the grill and it cooked for a, a little bit. Uh, it doesn't take very long. Obviously you're just going for the charred lines. It'll soften a little, um, but you don't want it too mushy. Or again, when you go to pull it off the grill, it's gonna just fall apart. So in terms of topping the peach with something to kind of make it into a dessert, I love grilled peaches as a dessert item. So if you think about it, they're gonna be low in calories um, and they're gonna be just a lot healthier for you than a big piece of like peach pie. So you can grill the peach and then you can top it with honey, um, agave nectar, there's also a, um, the recipe from the Food Network that I use for this, um, you take butter, cinnamon, and some sugar, combine it, melt it, and then you could drizzle it over the peach as well. So you're still making the peach a little sweeter than it would normally be, but you're not adding a ton of extra calories like you would with a pie or something like that. So a very simple, fast, if you're already grilling out, this is a great thing um, to make as well because you already have a hot grill and um, you can just simply throw them on at the end of the meal and everyone can enjoy some fresh peaches. If you're wondering about any of these recipes, I've put all of them on my website, which is um, rdanna.com and they're on the blog. So you can just simply search for rdanna.com and um, all of those recipes are up there. I have linked to them. Um, so I kind of just perused the internet and found some good simple um, recipes for summer produce and I thought all these would be very easy to incorporate into your next summer gathering. Yeah they definitely look delicious and they smell delicious for sure. <laughs> well thank you to Anna and thank you to Marsh for providing us with all of the produce that you saw here earlier today and we will see you next month for our next segment and goodbye. <laughs>